theory of before and after kind of you can click on it, Google images it'll show you dozens of, 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 of images like this where it'll be the same community just before and after the war very um, very crazy um, I was gonna look at that passage in that that um, about the wealth, about giving the money, but then I was like, nah, screw it. I mean, I think you guys got, I think we all got the point about it anyways, why, why delve on it. Um, yeah. So, um, these are just some, some images that I think captivate the essence of, of bitterness. Um, the first, it, you've heard pastors saying, bitterness is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Just think about that. Drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. When you become embittered towards somebody, think of that, the different ways that you feel towards them, the, 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 the anger that you feel, the, just a, um, like a burning hatred. And now realize that, that, that you're hurting yourself. You know, I think that that really captivates it. The root of bitterness is a common demon. <laughs> the root of bitterness is a common demonic root, and the lives of people who have been hurt, wounded, or rejected. Roots are hidden, but they manifest fruit. Basically, the, 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 the bitterness always bears that fruit. Bitterness is a paralytic. Love is a much more vicious motivator. And we're actually going to look at, a, look at a verse that has to do with that. Um, bitterness is a paralytic. Bitterness just kind of halts us in our steps, causes us to be ineffective. Um, okay, so what is bitterness? If you had to define the word bitterness, what would it be? Is uh, is anybody cold? No. Don't everybody speak at once. <laughs> Maybe, maybe like a undying hatred for, for someone? Undying, ooh. A zombie hatred, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Undying hatred. Or the zombie hatred. Let's go with zombie hatred. Can we, get, can we switch that to zombie hatred? It's not undead. You, you know, the, uh, yeah, the, 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 the undead? <laughs> zombie hatred. <laughs> I mean, come on. How many times is somebody going to give you that opportunity? Come on. I, I It has to be. <laughs> but anyway. I guess you could also say that bitterness is, is like cancer because once you let it, once you can fight, it just spread. Hmm. If you don't get control of it, it just okay. kind of spreads. And I think it affects more areas in your life than just, you know, I may be bitter towards Chuck. But that affects my attitude in, in everything and, and everybody that I deal with. The thing that I hate about Chuck the most is that he started that youth group. <laughs> he was sitting yeah. in front of me, okay? He's like no, no, but seriously, he started that youth group. Now we have teenagers at the church. Uh, now Thank we you. Oasis. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so... Anybody else is, is anybody else gonna answer this one? Because I, I feel like you guys are pretty quiet on this one. I mean, I understand, but it's hard to explain. Okay. Do you want to try or no? Angry. Okay. Like, like, like you set your mind on something that that you hate, and you just can't get your mind off of it. Hmm. 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 Good. Like you said, like poison. It just—it it, it will take a long time to wear off. Of it. Yeah, well. I don't know. Yeah. The the definition of bitterness, which I think you guys, there's only so much you can really say about it. Um, extreme anger. What what Diana just said. Um, a distressed state of mind, um, or severe regret or pain. Um. And that kind of encapsulates the word bitter. How do I know that I'm bitter? And I want you to say that, but not yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It's 
Everything they do gets on your nerves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I, uh, I like that. Oh, did it? Did anybody else want a sheet? They didn't get one. No. Okay, because it's right here. If you do. How do I know that I? I really like that. <laughs> How do I know that I'm better? You may gossip a lot about the person. You may you what? Gossip about the person. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> Itching to gossip. Yeah. <laughs> you don't talk to them for five years. Yeah. 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 Holding a grudge. <laughs> I would say you almost don't want to let it go. Like you don't want yeah. to forgive them. You yeah. feel yeah. you. It, it's almost like it makes you feel better yeah. being mad at them. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to try and tear them down to everybody else to make everybody else yeah. feel the same way that you do about yeah. them. Because I, they yeah. need to understand how terrible this person is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but seriously, that that I think that that really hits the nail on the head there. I, I think that's if I can't say anything nice mm -hmm. if I avoid the person no. if I can't see their positive traits can't see anything nice about them they're just a terrible person just can't see anything nice if I justify my wrong by what they have done mm -hmm. it's okay for me to you know um Oh, here's one that, I, that that I've heard recently. You know, well, uh, Serena, you're gonna be my scapegoat, okay? okay. Um, Serena's sleeping around. Now I look at porn, but that's okay. But she's sleeping around. You know, we, we look for that thing that they're doing to, to kind of like uh, make ourselves feel better about the bad attitude. Like I think you you were kind of saying saying about this, but right. then we use that as a plateau then the, then to justify our what we're doing. Oh, what's well, different? Because I'm I'm a better person. You know, comparing yourself to them as better. It's different with me, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm better than them. It's different. I think also taking everything somebody says personally. Oh, yes. They did that on purpose. They said that on purpose to make me mad. They said that on purpose in front of everybody to embarrass me. You Do you see know? how Serena is speaking from experience on I this am. one? I'm kidding. I've dealt with this a lot in my life. <laughs> But actually, you know, I'm dealing with somebody right now who has who is holding a grudge against me. As they should. And this is kind of, you know, the things, you know, I wronged them so much. I, you know, so it's not only something I personally dealt with myself being yeah. bitter against somebody, but also having somebody be bitter towards me, you know. Yeah. I, didn't do anything to I think one more thing is worthy of saying. When you run and hide from them at Walmart. <laughs> when you run into them at Walmart and you hide. <laughs> nope, I'm not here. <laughs> Don't play all innocent. You go to the garden section. <laughs> yeah, don't play all innocent, you guys. I know I'm not the only one who does that. <laughs> when I met Susan and Randy, when I met the Boars, I told them that my parents were dead. <laughs> really? <laughs> they were like, oh, what are your parents? I was like, they're dead. No, oh, I'm sorry, because that's how bitter I was at my mom and said that. I didn't even admit that they were alive. Well, I didn't. I mean, I don't know if bitterness gets any worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't let Becky see my parents tell four months later. Okay, well, that's different than telling well, them. You, they're dead. Yeah. You're never going to meet them. And then seeing your mom at Walmart. Okay, well, there's my mom. I'm She's saying to my dead. mom. <laughs> yes, Susan, that's my mom. She's alive. <laughs> it's a miracle. She's back from the dead. Rejoice. <laughs> zombies everywhere. Yeah. Zombie, zombies, zombies. I am to never speak to my mom. I was like, She's dead. So I might as well just tell her. <laughs> I love my mom now. I have a good, pretty good relationship. <laughs> awesome. Man, this is how funny I found that, Serena. I, I thought of something to say, and then I instantly forgot it. <laughs> now that's going to bug me for the rest of the night. What are the effects of bitterness? Being in a bad mood all the time. Yeah. 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 Being, yeah, somebody that nobody wants to be around because all you have are negative things to say. You're just real negative. 
You're getting me down, man. Yeah, you're uh-huh. harshing my mellow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you kind of stopped growing in price, too. Okay. Um, anger? Anger, yeah, you're angry. Yeah. Yeah. Health problems. I just, yeah. Yeah, I just can't get her room with her. <laughs> She's dead. I don't no, they're dead. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't remember that. No, I I was well I was only twelve, I think. Yeah, you were twelve. Man, I was gonna say something about that. Depression. Well because you feel so bad about yourself. Yeah. Mm. You know, you know, you know. Nobody is happy being bitter. No. You know, you may feel better to vent about somebody and try and get, like, that may be like a temp. It's like drugs, though. It's temporary. It's mm-hmm. a temporary feeling of happiness, but it, it immediately goes away. Yeah. Because you know? yeah. that's really all that you're depending on to, you know. to be happy. So. Mm. You know. And we all. What are the effects of bitterness? My mom still doesn't know that I told people that she did. I'll never tell her that. Well, yeah, we are re- we are recording. Oh no! Oh, God, she I'll know. I'll share it on her Facebook. <laughs> right. Watch this very interesting discussion with Serena Borer, <laughs> Joyce Singh. Now we've got all the names down there. <laughs> Say something to scare the uh, NSA, though. Bombs. <laughs> Cell phone bombs. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Cell phone bombs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you mirror their behavior. Um, either an action or an attitude. So what some people do... I'll use this example. Like... Let's say it's really killing me that I can't remember the, what I was gonna say when Serena said that thing. <laughs> yeah, gum. Anyways, um, let's say um, this is one I've heard recently, so we'll just go with it. Um, let's say you had you had a bad father, okay? And um, you know I'll never be like him. So you 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 try all you can. And in fact, this is actually an subship lesson. Um, you try all you can to not be that person. And yet you still become that exact same person, although you do nothing the same, because you still show the same heart. Yeah. Let's say, for instance, your father was a drunkard, and, and you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you take that, that, that root problem with his attitude. He was selfish. He was prideful. Whatever. And now you're doing the exact same thing. You see, even though you're not doing any of the same actions, your attitude is the exact same. Yeah. that makes sense? Kind of? Sort of? Um... Yeah. So, anyways, um, sometimes even um, this is one that I, one that I heard recently. Um, this person was mad at someone else because, or bitter at someone else, and and they started criticizing one thing that they were doing. Oh well, they just they just sleep around with everyone. And then I said to them, well, aren't you sleeping around? And he said, well, it's different because, you know, I'm sleeping around with this one person, whereas this person's sleeping around with everybody. But unmarried sex is unmarried sex. You're still sinning in God's eyes. Well, it's different because I'm a better person. See what I mean? You see, you see what I mean? They're doing the exact same thing but justifying it because of that. They're mirroring the behavior, but they're just making themselves feel better about it when it's them doing it. Does that make right. sense? So, um, <clears throat> my failure to other sins, sometimes the same sin which irritates you. Pastor has said this multiple times. The same thing that irritates you in someone else is usually in you in some form. So take note of those people who are annoying the heck out of you. There's probably something in you that's kind of somewhere in there. See what I mean? That, that, that's just a fact of life. Um, for instance... The, 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 this one happens all the time. Uh, there will be a husband who's on porn, okay? And so he'll get upset at himself for being, um, for failing to, to, to do better. So then he'll take out his anger on his wife because she 
I mean, let's think of some of the things that, that wives typically do. Um, leave stuff lying around. Don't put something up when they're done using it. So I'll take out his anger on his wife because he's mad at himself. See what I mean? And kind of mask it with that. Failure to other sins, the same sin which irritates you. See what I mean? Um, <clears throat> so, um, spiritual death, the grace you mentioned this, your character shrinks. What, what, what happens is God brings by irritating people so that your character will grow and you will, you will change. Same thing he does with irritating situations. They just come by and cause your character to grow. When you fail to grow from that chance, what happens is your heart gets a little bit harder. And God will keep bringing by the people. It's not like once you fail, once failed, always failed. God will, God will, will bring you back to the test. He won't give up on you. But it'll be harder the next time around. That's just, that's just for sure. Um, there was this one person who was very annoying, very annoying. Oh my gosh, they were annoying. Very annoying, okay? But I learned how to deal with them. So God brought another person who was just like them, and I had to deal with both of them at the same time. Very annoying. But once again, I learned how to deal with it. Then I went to college, and there was someone just like them. Just like them. And boy, was she annoying. But I learned to deal with her. So then, see what I mean? And God kept bringing these people, and each of the different people was a little bit more difficult to deal with, but because I learned the first time, it was a lot easier for me the next time. See what I mean? Whereas it would have been harder for me. Does that make sense? So God kind of brings these things around. It's kind of like a circular thing. You kind of... Yeah, have anybody ever watched the ND, what is it, 500 or whatever? Or 300 or whatever? You keep going around the same thing. <laughs> and, and God causes that character to grow. And then when he thinks you're ready, he brings you to something new. So, um, but there is that spiritual death that happens. What happens is, is, is we get mad at somebody and we think, this time it's okay. And so inside, we just kind of stop growing spiritually. We kind of reach a place in our prayer life where we're not happy. We reach a place in our life in general where, excuse me, where we're not satisfied, but we don't understand why we're not satisfied. So we're always looking for something else, something bigger, something better, something flashier. Um, in today's society, it becomes increasingly difficult to go overcome bitterness because we have all kinds of other things to, to substitute the time with iPhones, video games, movies, shows. I mean, there's so many different things to, to, to take away that, 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 you know, that uh, distract us, if you will. You know, yeah. um, but anyways, you kind of see where I'm going on there. Um, your relationship suffers. Somebody mentioned this one. Who said this one? About, you know, it affects the people who are hanging. It was you? I think so. Yeah, uh, your relationships suffer. I'm not just talking about like boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, that kind of nonsense. I'm talking about relationships in general, with your mother, your father, your bro your brother, your sister, your your son, your daughter, whatever. Um, your relationships will suffer. Um, it puts too much strain because of your bad attitude. It starts to put a strain on them where they get a bad attitude. Um, sometimes even you relay your bad attitude towards somebody else, and they get a bad attitude towards that person. So others are sucked in. Um, you get it where your bad attitude just puts somebody else in a bad mood. Where they, they don't even know for sure why they're mad, they're just in a bad mood. We, we reflect things. And we kind of, uh, there's something, a term in, in counseling actually, uh, counseling transference. What that means is when you're counseling someone, sometimes you start dealing with, with, dealing with things either that the person is dealing with or their depression or their burden becomes kind of your burden. And eventually you kind of need a counselor for, to go to for yourself because your patient will transfer their emotions and their feelings onto you. Does that make sense? Kind of? Sort of? And it's kind of the same principle with this. Um, you know, you have a bitterness. I'm bitter towards Diana. So then I'm, I'm hanging out with Zach, and he's going to pick up my bad attitude regardless of whether he even knows what I'm bitter at. See what I mean? It's transference. Kind of like that. Um, a very twisted love triangle. If instead of love, you have war. A war triangle. Um... <laughs> Uh, eats your energy and stills your focus. I, Chuck mentioned this already about how you don't feel very well physically, in, in your body. You know, in fact, you can even get sick, get sick on, uh, you know, from 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 a bad attitude, uh, where your physical health will decline. Um, but uh, more than just that, sometimes you, you you will actually be more tired throughout the day. Um, you you will be kind of more groggy in general. You just won't have that that sunny disposition. 
you know, we kind of more more like a, like a veil. In fact, we're going to look at this with depression next week. But um, people who suffer with depression, it's like a veil. You, you just can't see things the same. It's You know, you look at the sun and it just looks dark. You look at the sky, it just looks dark. It not, doesn't give you those same feelings. And it's kind of like with this. Um, kind of just eats that energy up. Uh, it also steals your focus. Um, you know, um, <coughs> it's like this. Can I have a volunteer? Anyway. Anyway. Yeah? Okay. All right. I want you to focus on the pen. I'm going to face this way. Focus on the pen. Okay. Now reach out and grab the pen. Okay, good. Now I want you to look at Gracie. Look at Gracie. Now grab the pen. <laughs> what you aim at is what you hit. <coughs> what you aim at is what you hit. When you have a bad attitude towards someone and you're, and you're, and you're really focused on that, you're not going to be able to focus on anything else because that's going to steal your time. That's going to steal your attention. It's everything, you're, you're tuned into that. You st it steals your focus. You will be unfocused at work, at church, in your study life. Whatever it is that you're doing, you will be unfocused in that because your attention is elsewhere. That's how bitterness works. So these are just some of the effects of bitterness. Um, I think books could be written on the effects of – and probably have been written on the effects of bitterness. And we just don't have time to get into it anymore. I think that, that covers the kind of basics of it there. Um, <clears throat> So that brings up the question, whenever you're talking with someone who's dealing with severe bitterness, something that, that they've been dealing with for a while, you know, they're, they're really in, it's really entrenched in there. This isn't someone who just stumbled upon – I mean this is someone who's, who struggles with it, okay? Um, when, they are, when they have reached this place of, of spiritual death and everything, they just kind of have this attitude. Who cares? I'm not that bad off. Uh, it's not that bad. It's not that big of a deal. Who cares? So what would you say to this person? Who cares? It's okay to think about it. What would you say to them to give them a change? You can't make someone else change. I think no, what I mean, you mean is to cause them to rethink what they're doing. Right, right. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Okay. Yes. There are two things from the Bible that I think are extremely important. What was the question? Uh... What would you answer this person who says, "Who cares? I'm just not. I'm not that bad off. It, it, it doesn't matter that much. I'm okay." One of your, what? You know, he gave us a question last week. Yeah, the question of the week. One of my uh, verses. That yes, I, absolutely. Okay. Yes. So Hebrews twelve fifteen. Okay. It says, "See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it I may mean, become defiled." Okay. Very good. Okay, so that kind of has what we're talking about with the effects of sin, how it kind of just spreads. Right. Well, so since someone's that bad bitterness. You can show them this verse that not even the, the little bit of bitterness we need to have us. Mm. Oh, good point. Good point. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I think for me, in dealing with you know such deep-rooted bitterness, was and and you know I went through the same thing where. You know, you could not talk me out of my feelings for towards this person or whatever. Um, I think it just took um, a lot of ministering to me mm -hmm. and me growing in God. Okay. That's really what made the difference because, I mean, who cares? I'm, I'm not that bad off, you know. And there's nothing really anybody could, could say mm -hmm. said that was going to change my mind. Um, I just remember always... You know, getting mad at your mom and telling her, you don't understand. You don't understand. 
you don't know what it's like to be me or to have dealt with this, and I'd get real mad. Yeah. You know, because I felt like you don't understand. How can you tell me how to yeah. feel this way? Um, so I think it was just me growing in God. Okay. And just, I think also being around other people and seeing, you know, that they may not be going through the same thing that I'm going through, but everybody goes through something yeah. that can make them bitter. And I think watching how other people living for God and dealing with bitterness the right way, kind of like transference, mm -hmm. you know, them rubbing off on me instead mm -hmm. of me rubbing off on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. I like that so much. I'm going to change the question. What would you say to yourself? If you felt this way, because I think I think Serena's on a roll. I think Serena's on a roll. Maybe that I need to be around people that influence me to be better. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm sensing a soapbox, so I'm going to step on it. Um, sometimes we grown-ups do very childish and stupid things. Would you all agree with me? Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, sometimes we take our kids, our innocent little kids, and we have this kind of a mindset. I'm going to have my good kid hang out with these bad kids to rub on Oh to rub, oh, you, you know the oh, kind. Of, even Sam is not. He's like, no, you're not hanging out with those kids. You want to end up in prison? I've been there. It's not fun. And if I have anything to do it, you're not going there. Like yeah. he even is like, no. Yeah. Um. <laughs> sometimes we make that kind of an idea where, or even sometimes with ourselves, because not everybody here has kids. So I'll try to make it more relevant <laughs> to you guys who don't have kids. Okay. This person needs my interaction to save them from being a bad seed. I need my guidance. Yes. Yes. Or, or, and you're gonna like this one. I can change them through dating. Mm. Oh no. Okay. Mm. You go ahead and believe that, but <laughs> the 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 many 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 people who come in for pastoral counseling are all answers that no, that does not work. Right? But anyways, <laughs> anyways. Um, and it's actually kind of interesting that people don't understand what the Bible says about this. First off, bad company corrupts good morals. If you hang out with people like that, you will be corrupted. But didn't Jesus hang out with people like that? First off, he did. However, he was not close friends with any of those people. If you keep in mind, he ministered to them, but his close were the three, then the twelve, then the seventy-two. Those were his close, okay? So, just for a while on the same page. Uh, furthermore, Jesus matched his ministry time with heavy prayer. He makes that clear with his te with his different teachings, and also some of the writers actually mention it too. Like one of them says, and then he went alone to pray, and all this different stuff. So there is kind of that. Um, so how do we how do we fall in with that? Well, there's some people who just don't want to change, and you're going to waste your time trying to get them to change, trying to force them into it, trying to be the Holy Spirit in that situation, and you will be corrupted. Just throwing that out there. But that's a little, just a little side nugget for you guys to enjoy. A little tasty morsel. I think too, realizing that we're bitter. Yeah. And coming to terms with that. Yeah. Like, okay, I realize that every day I face, you know, becoming bitter over something. No. Yeah. Something can get to me every day and make me bitter. I pray every day to <laughs> God any bitterness, you know, uproot any bitterness in my heart. Like, do not let bitterness take root in my heart and help me to take every thought captive, you know, every day. And I think just praying through that every morning before you even face anything no. gives you a, a step forward, you know, no. a, a step, you know, ahead. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. To kind of combat that a little bit. I think also whether it's that, um, asking yourself or someone else is asking, why are you so upset with this person? Hmm. What's the root cause why you're so upset with this person? Making you change it? Well, that's good, but I do want to give a little bit of a word of warning. Sometimes with that, it can just turn into a thing of um, 
gossip and trying to pull you into it. Yeah. So it, that's good, but sometimes well, it kind of backfires on tell us. Tell me why you're so upset this person. I'm saying, look, look inside and are you I really see what you're saying upset now. with this person, or are you just making it a big deal? Uh, you know, I'm talking about talking to yourself about that. Like, I like, see. Confronting yourself. Why are you so ah. upset about this? Okay. Why am I so upset at this person? I gotcha. I gotcha. And be sure to be praying for yourself. Not God changed the other person, but God changed me. No. Yeah. Um, I think there's two things from the Bible that I think are, are, are pretty pretty relevant to this. Um, just in case you ever start falling into the into bitterness about something, um, these two points from the Bible have have drastically changed my my point of view on a lot of different things that I was getting upset about. First off, your life is not your own. The Bible says you've been bought with a price. You can't carry carry around the burden of bitterness just simply because. Your life isn't your own. You can't choose, pick and choose what to follow and what not to follow. I think that that's extremely important. Because for those people who do serve with bitterness, you know, um, sometimes, especially if you're someone who's been saved for a long time and then fall to bitterness, you just kind of get this apathy towards Christianity. And you don't really seek much in spiritual, you know what I mean, spiritually. Because you, you had that and you drifted. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? And in fact, sometimes it's actually the fact that you have been safe for so long actually comes back to bite you because you start thinking, you know, I'm just so much loftier than people like Serena. See what I mean? Like you start getting in your head that you're better, you know. And even though you're doing the exact same thing as as someone who is stuck in bitterness, see what I mean? You justify like, oh, it's be better somehow because I have that. Basis for what Jesus said was for those who, who have been given much, much more is expected. For that person who grew up in Christianity, they're expect, they're held to a higher standard than someone who just came to Christianity, see what I mean, and and was developing past that bitterness. Does that make sense? So the first thing there, um, your life is not your own, and that goes for all these different things that, that we kind of want to keep on to greed, jealousy, you know, lust, uh, you know, go down the list. Our life is not our own. We cannot pick and choose what to do and what not to do. And then the second thing that really impacted me, God does not forgive those who do not forgive others. When you hold bitterness in your heart, literally, you are giving up your salvation. Do you understand the weight of that? This person really wronged me. You really wronged God. And the Bible is extremely clear on this. If you do not forgive someone else, your Father will not forgive you. And, you know, um, we'll look at that in just a second and what the Bible say, says. Um, but let's first turn to Leviticus 19.18. If you want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. Like, for instance, take Chuck. He's not turning there. <laughs> Leviticus 19.18. Um, you shall... Um, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Um, second, Proverbs 10:12. Hatred stirs up strife. <clears throat> Excuse me, strife, but love covers all offenses. Hatred stirs up strife, but love co covers all offenses. You cannot possibly be bitter and be acting in love. Let me, let's just kind of clarify that. If you are truly loving someone, you're going to be covering that and covering those offenses rather than replaying them over and over in your head. Um, Twelve sixteen. The vexation of a fool is known at once, but the prudent ignores an insult. Basically, as soon as a fool is wronged, everybody knows. He lets everybody know. He opens his mouth, just flowing out. Oh, this person did this and this and this. But a wise person... I'm sorry. Where did it go? Uh, where did it go? I always just had my finger on it, I swear. Come back! Okay, there we go. Uh, but the prudent person ignores the insult, just lets it go. But they just lets it go. Yeah, Proverbs says, says elsewhere that anger is in the bosom of a fool. It's found real close to them. 
So, anyways, Matthew 6, 14 through 15. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So then, um, Romans 12, 17 through 21. And this is a very, um, very interesting part of Scripture because people don't quite understand it. But, but what makes it interesting is it is a, it is a comparison and contrast that... It just, I just love the way he words this. I'll read it to you, and then I'll, and then I'll talk about it. Um, starting in verse 17. Um, Repay no one evil for evil. Okay. Don't, don't, don't do anything wrong, even if somebody did something wrong to you. But give thought to, to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Well, I tried. Well, keep on trying. As far as it depends on you. Because that's what we do. Oh, well, I tried to do that, and I, you know, it didn't work. That person, whatever. You weren't held to whatever they did. You're at, you're held to whatever you do. So once again, you know, um, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Even for those people who refuse to have peace with you, you keep keeping on. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome <coughs> evil with good. See, the interesting thing here is when you truly learn to love somebody, you don't want to see harm happen to them. But that's how the harm actually does happen to them. By you being loving towards them, God uses your love to bring them towards repentance because it's, it's condemning for them. Let me give you an example. Zach wrongs me. So I wrong him right back. Now, although he's guilty for what he did, so he feels a little bit of shame, he justifies it in the sense that, you know what, he did the same he did something bad too. Example number two. Zach wrongs me, and I show him love back. Now, his guilt doesn't have a balance of my of me doing anything wrong. So now his guilt is going to build on him. And now it's going to cause him to feel worse and worse until he's brought to repentance. Right. See how that works? Mm -hmm. So in so doing, in, in finally learning to love your neighbor, when you don't actually see some, want to see something bad happen to them, it's going to heap burning coals on them and bring them to repentance. Whereas if you would have shown them evil, you would have repaid evil for evil, exactly what this whole passage here is saying not to do, you will never get to see them repent and never get to see them change. And so you will lose out. And they will walk away scot-free. So not only do you not get to see it, but they are not are not condemned for it. How terrible is that? What if see? They don't? Do what? What if they don't? Well, that's something that you know the Lord deals with. To see that, that's actually why He said that. When you ask that question, it shows that you're not truly loving them. Vengeance is mine; I will repay, says the Lord. See, I'm glad you said that because ser I don't. I think I don't know if you were joking or not, but I seriously heard somebody say that. But but what if they don't repent? If you're truly loving someone, it doesn't matter if they repent because you keep turning the other cheek, realizing that God repays yeah. the vengeance, right. not you. Does that make sense? Well, they may not realize they're going whatever they're going. Right, but once again, that's not your fault or your problem. See, you learn to love the person. And that changes the way you treat them, and the Holy Spirit will do his work. He will bring that person to, to condemnation. He will. Um, there, yeah, I mean, that, that just, I mean, I have never seen somebody who was in a conflict with someone, and the other person showed love, and they didn't feel condemnation for it. I've never once seen that. However, I have seen somebody pretend to love someone just so that God would judge that person. <laughs> I have seen that multiple times, and I don't know if any of you guys do it, but you best watch out. I'm on the prowl. <laughs> Was someone going to say something? I thought I saw a hand. No. Okay. Um, so never avenge yourselves, even if the person never changes. Pretty terrible stuff, right? Don't you just hate some parts of the Bible? <laughs> like the parts that say, don't do this, don't do that. It's like, Why? I want to, though. Um, I'm joking. 
Um, okay, so Ephesians 4. Um, Ephesians 4. 31. 31. Going through what? 32. Okay. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Um, and therefore, and if you go into, see, into chapter, five, says, uh, chapter 5, it says, Therefore, be <coughs> imitators of God. Be imitators of God. Why is that relevant? Because he just said that God forgave us through Christ. Be imitators. Okay? Because um, think of it like this, okay? Who invented morality? How do we, uh, right and wrong, who invented that? God. Wrong is anything that goes against God's character. So when anybody sins anywhere, who are they wronging? God, because they're sinning against God's character himself. That's why David says, after the sin of Bathsheba in Psalms, he says, I have sinned against you. Because he realized it wasn't just Uriah. He did sin against Uriah, but the root of all that was that he sinned against God. God gave him, and he took it for granted, and then he showed contempt for his brother. He didn't love God or his neighbor in the situation. He loved himself. So he broke all of the law and all the commandments, and all the law and all the commandments are based on God's character. See? So he realized what he had actually done. So re realize that when, when, when anybody wrongs you, they're, they're more importantly wronging God because it's against God's character. That's why Peter says it's better to just suffer for doing the right thing than it is to suffer for doing the wrong thing. Because at least the first way, you're, 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 you are righteous and God can, can work through that situation. And the second way, you've got a bunch of people you know, all shooting each other. There's nothing good can come of that. Don't repay evil for evil. Or with evil. Um, okay, that takes us to Hebrews 12, which uh, you already um, talked about. But I want to read the verse before it as well. Um, Ephesians was way up in one Yeah? Uh, starting in verse 14. Strive for peace for everyone. <coughs> Strive for it. Try very hard. Strive for it. Um, and, and for the holiness... Check this out. And for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. The holiness without which no one will see the Lord. And then he says, see to it that no one, no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. See? See how those two verses relate there? Very important stuff. Very important stuff. James 4.1 what causes quarrels and um, and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? Mm. Remember that when you're struggling with bitterness or anger or gossip or complaining or any of the things that we talked about. Why are you having such a hard time with this? Because your passions are at war within you. This is what we do when we're in a conflict. I was wronged. This is how it actually is. You are a human and you have sinful traits. And you're going to mess up. See, it, it, if there wasn't a little bit of flesh in there at least, you wouldn't get offended when people did you wrong. See what I mean? But there's some flesh in there, isn't there? So you feel the need to justify yourself. You feel whenever you do something really good, you, you like giving yourself a pat on the back. You know what I mean? <coughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, I did this. You know, <coughs> Or you hear this, I deserve this. I deserve. Uh, um, I heard somebody say this a couple weeks ago. I deserve buying this buying this gaming system because I I, I got out of debt. So you're gonna reward yourself by getting back into debt? Calm down there. Calm down. But anyways, um, anyways, uh, but just that that it's because there are passions at war within you. You know, pastor told this joke, and I think it's worth repeating. You know, um, there was this guy stranded on an island, and. Uh, Finally, somebody came and, and they, they found him. And they, when they went to pick him up, he was giving them a tour of the island. Oh, this is my house. This is this is my old church, and this is my new church. I didn't, you know, I didn't like the people at that one, so I went to this one. But he stranded on an island by himself. See, because the problem is the passions that are at war within us. See, we like to what we like to do is we like to blame everything on Satan. Satan made me do it. No, he didn't. You reject. Is the James says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Right. 
Basically, what it comes down to is we sin as Christians because we like it. It feels so good. Ooh, it feels so good. You guys know what I mean, so I'm not going to bother dragging it out. But 1 John 4, I think, kind of summates the entire discussion of bitterness. Starting in verse 8. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. And in case you didn't understand what he's saying, down in verse 20, he says it in another way. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. You cannot be bitter towards people, at least not for very long. God always works on that, and you change your heart, he changes your heart, um, while you're in love with God. It doesn't work like that, because God's love is encompassing. He changes our heart. Now, let me give a little bit of word of, of hesitation here. Did you know you guys are going to deal with bitterness still? All your life probably, and anger and bitter, uh, gossiping and complaining, all these different things. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. It's not based on that. Don't give yourself little guilt trips, okay? It's based on God's goodness. God will work in you. Just don't become hardened in your heart, okay? When these times come, be quick to repentance. Be quick to repentance. As as if the Holy Spirit will, will, will call to mind these things, when he does listen, and, it, and if you don't listen... When things happen, bite the bullet and swallow your pride. And you'll know what I'm talking about when you're in the situation. You're going to be in something and you won't listen to the, you won't listen to the Holy Spirit because, oh no, I'm right this time. And then a couple months later, you're going to be all in a crappy mood and all, everything's going to be going wrong. And then God's going to cause all these different things to, to, to bring you to repentance. And you're going to be faced with this, with this option. Either humble yourself and say, you know what, I was wrong. Or keep hardening your, keep st stiffening out your neck and, and, and be broken beyond repair. It, it, I've seen it happen to many people this past year, and unfortunately, not everybody made it through. Pride is a terrible thing. So when this does happen, because it will, we're people, we do mess up, be quick to, to repent. Be quick to repent. Okay. When David, when the, when, when, when the prophet came to David and said, it was you, you did this, he said, yes, I did. Be quick to repent. Be, be quick to repent. Anyways, going back with this verse. Um, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. So what we try to do is we try to play the uh, the pious person. We try to learn to love, our, love people that annoy us, so that way our love for God will be for sure. It doesn't work like that. Keep seeking God, and God will worry about the rest. See what I mean? He'll work in you. you. You'll have to give stuff up. You'll have to humble yourself. But he'll keep working on you. You just got to keep seeking after him. But I don't know what else to do. When you've done all else to stand, keep standing. Just keep going. Keep going. Pray. Seek the, seek the Lord. Or read the word. I mean, it, it's something that it's, it's going to be a daily battle. Pastor mentioned this over the past couple weeks. It's not like... Okay, 2015 is over. No more struggles. No, 2015 was a hard year for many of us, but there's going to be more troubles to come by. See, I mean, it's not so important about the battles that are in the future. It matters right now are you serving God. Right now are you seeking them. I mean, if you remember two years ago when we finished up the discussion on Hebrews, that's what I said was the whole climax of Hebrews. Keep your eyes fixated on Christ. That's Hebrews in a single sentence. I mean, that's really the summation of it. So, um, are there any questions about this or anything else that you want to add or anything? Like, for instance, you know, well, anything? Um, well, Go ahead. Uh, back to, uh, you know, loving them even though they're doing something wrong to you. After, after a few times of, you know, being nice to them or doing something for them, it kind of grows on you to where you, you do start loving them actually, you know? Um, and then also... Yeah, fake it till you make it. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. And then also, uh, there's a story, uh, there's a pastor's wife, and uh, they would have uh, devotionals at their house, kind of like what we do. And there's this one girl that would come, and she was so mean, especially to the pastor's wife. And after a couple of years, they were uh, called somewhere else. And uh, so they were moving. And right before they moved, the girl <coughs> showed up at her house crying, saying... What am I going to do? You were so nice to me. You're the only one that's ever been nice to me. You know, because that one, the pastor's wife showed love to her, even though she was mean to her. 
and it made a difference in her, even though it didn't show until years later. Um, and I want to come back to the first thing she said, the whole faking it till you make it thing. Sometimes you have to do what's right when you don't feel like doing what's right, and then eventually God changes your heart. You know what I mean? So if you can just get past that hump of, but I really don't want to do this, do it anyways. But but I really don't want to do this, just do it anyways. Good, good point. <clears throat> Anybody else? Anything else? Question of the week. Does the Bible address anxiety or depression? And if so, what do you think it has to say about it? I want to see some creativity on this one. If I hear the same verse repeated five different times, you know the verse I'm talking about. Matthew and Luke? <laughs> no, um, um, I haven't given you a spirit of fear, but of... Oh, uh, you not be anxious whatever. about food. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of... Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. So I want to see some creativity. You can't use that verse from First Timothy or Second Timothy, First Timothy, one of the Timothys, where he says that about you know I didn't, you don't have a spirit of fear. You know the verse I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And then the one in I think it's in Matthew and Luke, yeah. possibly even Mark, where it says you know don't don't be anxious about anything. But I want to see some creativity here. Okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. So obviously next week we're talking about.